Good morning. My name is Peg Bershon and I'm here from uh, Renville County this morning. Um, I'm a landowner and I've actively been involved with the current proposed CO2 pipeline infrastructure project in Minnesota from Summit Carbon Solutions in Iowa. And for the past two years, I have um, done my best to learn as much about this as possible because it, the proposed project is slated to be at the foot of my driveway. I'm a parent, I'm an educator, and farming has been part of our family for multiple generations. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you some of the concerns we have about House File 342. As stated, House File 342 broadly supports the development and deployment of carbon capture sequestering technologies in Minnesota as a method for reducing greenhouse gas emissions in order to achieve the state's greenhouse gas emission reduction goals as established in a section, under section 216H.102 subdivision one. The bill implies that carbon capture technology will reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and this simply is not true. In fact, it does just the opposite. It actually incentivizes farmers to continue growing corn and the production of ethanol. I think you need to keep in mind that for every gallon of ethanol we produce, that is mixed with eight or nine gallons of fossil fuel, gasoline, um, creating gasoline, which just adds to our greenhouse gas emission burden. The process of capturing CO2 at the ethanol plant is highly energy and water intensive. It actually takes more energy to convert the CO2 gas to a liquid so that it can be transported in the pipeline. This process of distilling and compressing the gas is done at extremely high temperatures and requires actually more water to capture the carbon than it does to make ethanol. The industry would like you to believe that CCS will actually lower the carbon intensity score of ethanol, but because of the significant amounts of energy and water needed to facilitate the CCS process, it actually increases the carbon footprint significantly. For more than two decades, the federal government has pumped billions of dollars into research on CCS. And the fact that 85% of these projects have failed and shuttered and the handful that are still operating are only doing so with subsidies from the federal government and taxpayers. I caution you not to run in, rush into a situation where Minnesota becomes a pilot project for a public for-profit company to make money at the expense of taxpayers once again. Beyond this not being a well thought out strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions, there are risks to rural communities. The Pipeline Hazardous Materials Safety Administration mm -hmm. has recognized that their guidelines do not address the risks associated with CO2 pipelines and have actively been working to update their safety standards and guidelines. I would strongly encourage you to look at what this infrastructure needs to operate before we begin building an infrastructure such as this. I would require these companies to be much more transparent with their energy and water demands. The proposed 28.5 mile stretch in Ottertail and Wilkin County estimates an additional 12 million gallons of water a year to run the Fergus Falls plant's carbon capture process. Summit Carbon Solutions currently has contracts with five other ethanol plants in the 10 county proposed footprint of Minnesota with the potential for three additional plants. If I've done my math correctly, we can expect a demand for an additional 72 to 100 million gallons of water a year. And in 2023, we had communities in the proposed footprint that didn't even have enough water for their municipal freshwater drinking needs. This bill will prioritize an extractionist industry over rural Minnesotans and puts our freshwater and groundwater drinking supply, our freshwater and groundwater supplies at risk. Lastly, Minnesota does not have the geology required to sequester CO2 within our borders. If this CCS infrastructure is built in Minnesota, we have no assurances that the CO2 will be that will be extracted will stay in the ground. The race for the 45 Q dollars at the federal level is really just a carbon Ponzi scheme. We have no assurances that the CO2 will stay after the 45Q um, incentive sunset. 
while you may have the best intentions of addressing greenhouse gas emissions, the impacts are too great for rural Minnesota. This is a huge investment in Minnesota taxpayer dollars and could these dollars could be better used uh, at addressing our climate concerns. I wanna thank you, um, Representative Kegel and the committee for allowing me to testify today, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have.